I'm having fun tonight. This is that little um, rangefinder. It's actually two sensors in one, rangefinder and optical flow sensor uh, that I wired up today for the Anaconda. And I told you at that time I had to play with it and learn how to use it. I'd never worked with it before um, at all. I've got three of them, but I didn't want to put them on planes like the Mini Talon that are belly landers and land on the sensor. <clears throat> I know I can recess it a little bit up into the foam, but still it's going to get just debris and stuff from the ground and stuff in it. So that's one reason I was real excited to put it on the Anaconda. And I've got a Skyhunter 1800 that has landing gear that will work. It'll keep it six or eight inches up off the ground. But I think I've already worked out everything. And would you believe it? I accidentally hooked up the uh, receive and transmit on the UART correctly. I had a 50-50 chance. Sometimes even I win. So what I did, I've got this little spare F, F, H743 wing that I messed up at one point with a soldering iron. Who knows what's wrong with this one. If you've been through my videos, you've seen me blow a couple of these with uh, soldering irons before I learned where the components were placed. And what I did is I put that sensor I wired up today right across the middle set of um, pins right here on this one and uh, powered it up. And lo and behold, I was, I was pretty sure I had ground and voltage correct. But you never know about them darn UARTs. And the first time I powered it up, I got a red light and a flashing blue light. Well, it was killer. I like it when things work. We'll switch that aside there and go to the computer. So first here, we'll take a quick look at the H743. I put it on these four pins right here. Ground 4V5 so that it would power up with just USB power rather than this 5 volts which doesn't power up. So that's what I'm doing now converting that serial port to Ardu. We have to come in here and that was 2 TX2 and RX2 that I put it on. Therefore I'm having to talk about serial three and uh, Ardu. So armed with that we can drop this down. There's some information in here we'll get to in a second. We'll go ahead and start up Mission Planner. Connect to our little flight controller here on the bench. And if we go back to that page I just had up you can see basically this, I've got it hooked to a UART, uh, baud rates 115-200 serial 3. Now this is for iNav settings here. It sort of applies to Ardu too, but down here they've got the Ardu, not a lot on it, but it does help. This is the Ardu stuff down here. They say Serial Protocol 32. We're going to find out when we get there, and that'll be Serial 3 Protocol 32. That'll be MSP. Exactly what it says up here. So a lot of people who know what's going on can go ahead and get this going. And here's a flow type of 7 here. Don't do that in iNav. So armed with those values we'll go over into our do pilot here and first we'll go to serial three serial three we'll set the serial three baud to by the way this is the new version of our uh, mission planner one three eight one it's totally different i should do a video on this new mission planner I haven't worked with it very much yet, but I like it already. And Serial Protocol 3, 
that'll be 32 if we hit tab you also notice we could come down here and just uh, select MSP there and it'll put the 32 in 32 if it were none that's a minus one we come down here and we select this way MSP and you see it puts a 32 in there so we'll go ahead and write those out real quick we'll write parameters there's an optical flow sensor and a LiDAR in this unit. We're using the LiDAR for range finding. We could use the optical flow. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of use for it on an airplane like there is a quad, but we'll go ahead and enable both of them. So we'll come in here and we'll say flow type. You remember from the documentation that was a 7 or we can select MSP right here and it'll make it a 7 there. Write those perimeters. <coughs> I'm wanting to use it for a range finder so I'm going to come over here and say RNG FND and it's 1. So right here I can either put 32 here or I can come down and select MSP again and it'll put a 32 in there for me. That's one of the new things about the other one used to have a lot of flying help. You remember me complaining about that a lot when you uh, uh, pointed towards these things like that flying help that just popped up right there. Uh, it goes away though. Hmm. Well anyway with the new version of Mission Planner has a drop down list over here that used to come up and fly and help so I like that. Anyway we'll write out this perimeter. We're going to physically power down the flight controller and the uh, sensor. We'll physically power it back up. It's powered back up now. We'll reconnect to it. You can come out here to our front screen. We can go into status. A lot of things here being looked at. And if you look right now, you'll see right here, rangefinder 1. Look, it's changing values. It's having a little bit of trouble, but you see I'm pointing it around the room. Now I've got my hand there, and I'm backing my hand away from it. And you can see it going up in centimeters. It only has a range of about six and a half feet. I'm still continuing to back my hand up from it. I'm three or four feet away from it with my hand now. And now I'm getting out of the beam. It's not registering correctly on my hand. A little closer it comes back in. You can also come in here real quick and double click on this and go in and find rangefinder one and see here's those same values i pointed at the ceiling goes up towards 200 uh, it can't read a, above 200 200 is supposed to be its maximum range right there six and a half feet now i've got my hand in front of it again backing it up and you can see it right here i'm gonna move my hand towards it and you can see right here in the screen it's going up and down so <clears throat> as I said earlier today in a video I did get that sensor wired up and I needed to play with it to figure out how it works I'd never played with it before although I've had three in here for six months or so again I just don't want to belly land a plane on it and I never figured out how to do that with another plane not that it's not as simple as carving out a concave place in the bottom of the foam with an eighth inch of clearance. You know, debris coming up into that area, but it's not it might cause it problems, but it's not going to com completely destroy the components on the board. It's just going to get dirt and stuff on them. If we look back up here real quick. 
I'm going to see if we can find, oh, here we go. Here's your working range. It can't see any closer than 8 centimeters, and it goes out to 200 centimeters. Here's what I was talking about. This is the field of view on the flow sensor, the PWM, PMW 3901 chip, 42 degrees, but the LiDAR on it, the VL53LOX module, that chip, is only 27 degrees. And see, if you recess that too far into foam, you're going to have a problem with that vision. But I'm mostly interested in straight down for a landing, so it really doesn't matter. I could recess it probably a half inch into foam protect it from debris on one of my belly landers and it would be fine. Anyway, power consumption is 40 milliamps. I'm going to cut myself off right there. That gets the hardware running. That's what we're after right now. Uh, I got long-winded because I'm so excited it works so quickly and easily and went on to talking about all sorts of things. I just threw those other things out the window. For just a small example. It's after you've got the hardware running. Here's some of the stuff you do for the auto landing. You can see there's lots of perimeters for the auto landing. Flare altitude, uh, angles, uh, pre-flare altitude, that kind of stuff. Pre-flare airspeed. Those have to do with perimeters you're going to do in Ardu plane to perform the auto landing using that hardware. We're not going to get into that this stuff until I actually start doing an auto landing. Right now we're just trying to get the hardware set up. So that kind of shows you a little bit about that board, Ardu plane how to set up the hardware. I actually probably told you how to set up the hardware in iNav. Real quickly, Arduplane will use 10 such sensors and using the uh, six and a half feet that you've got and 20 centimeter, 200 centimeters, you could synthesize DJI's proximity sensors. You could put one in the front, back, right, left, bottom, top, and you could keep from running into anything with your little quads you make in your home. Just like DJI does. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Thank you for watching this.